Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands and tell God you want him. You need him in his fullness and in his glory. I give you one minute to begin to cry out to God. talking about not anointing carriers if it was anointing carriers we continue with our church business we're talking about glory carriers and you cannot compare the anointing to the glory There are very few glory carriers that have ever graced the earth. Very, very few that have ever graced planet earth. Anointed men are in their thousands. Anointed women are in their millions and billions. But glory carriers, glory carriers, they are too few. You hardly see them up to even two, three, four in a nation. Hardly, hardly. But anointed carriers, they are all over the place. I don't want to be a carrier of the anointing. A man can flow in the anointing and that same night he's sleeping with a harlot. But you cannot carry the glory and commit fornication and adultery. The glory will kill you. The glory is not the anointing. The glory is not a joking matter. Lift up your hands. And tell God, graduate me from the anointing. I want to be a carrier of the glory. I don't want to just be an ordinary vessel. Make me a golden vessel. Make me an instrument of your glory. Hey, Shaka! I will do anything. I will do anything. Hey! Just to say you. Hey. To behold you as my king. For your glory. I will do. I will do.
doing now. Daddy. Daddy. Don't allow our coming here to be in vain. Daddy. If it's only one man or only one woman you will raise as a literal carrier of your glory from this house, from these four days of being in your presence, not the crowd, but just give us a man. Just give us a woman. Raise up another William Branham. Raise up another William Seymour. Raise up another A.A. Allen. Ayayaya. Shaku shakata. Halibu shekeri. Uzi brindi elikato broso kuli anda alebu shakada ya. But can you raise another Charles Finney? And even as he was entering a city, the closer he was coming, the more the glory was entering the city. And ever before he landed, people have already been converted and repented. And even without opening his mouth, the spirit of conviction has gone ahead of him. Father, we labor too much because we operate only under the anointing. Father, we need a glory carriers. The manifestation of the sons of God. Daddy, can you raise up another Smith Wigglesworth? Who entered a train and without opening his mouth, everybody in that train, they stopped their discussion and at a point, they all turned and looked to him and said, who are you, you convictors of sin? Without opening his mouth, all of them, they surrendered their life to Jesus. Father, can you make us to be more than just born again Christians? Ayaya, Bushake, Bale, Brosanda, Idi, Anda, Eli, Kusa, Kada, Adaya, Bale, Broshinta, Kisi, Kisi, Kusha, Kadaya. Father, I provoke the heavens. I invite the heavenly hosts into this gathering. I invite the heavens into this earthly arena. I invite the great cloud of witnesses. I invite Jack Coe. I invite Smith Wigglesworth. I invite Catherine Kuhlman. I invite Maria Woodward Etta. I invite Amy Semple McPherson. I invite all the fathers, the mothers of the faith. John Alexander Dawi, Mashuka Paka. I invite them into this gathering in the cloud of witnesses. Pake, pale, pache, paka, pasa, mate, leko, seke, masusaza, mate, ele, pakusha, ha, pakatata. Let the heavens open. Let the train of the glory carriers of the fathers in glory begin to take their seats in this house. For the handing over of mantles and batons and torches. Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, take your seat beloved, pick up your Bibles, Proverbs 25 verse 4. Proverb 25, verse 4. Please, if you're a young man, a young woman, struggle and lay hold of Bible. I know we are in a generation of uh, iPad and generation of um, 
handsets. But you know that you cannot mark your handsets. Do you know, please let me have any of your Bibles. Let me have your Bibles. No, your Bible, your Bible. This is what we call Ark of Covenant. This thing is called Ark of Covenant. You can't, you can't convince me that you're addicted to this book when you don't carry the book. I tell you the truth. It's not, um, it's not um, what do you call it? It's not legalism. No, it's not a matter of legalism. If this generation continues the way we are, we will be worse, worse than the present set of politicians. If this generation of youth cannot raise the banner and raise the... If you, because what the youth of this generation is that you are, you are bringing down the standards to the lowest level. If you're going to be a glory carrier, it's not just carrying glory. You must carry glory and raise the standard. You can't convince me that you have been marking and marking and marking and marking your Bible when you don't carry Bible and you don't even have time for Bible. Neither can you convince me that you are addicted to this book when you don't carry the book. When I was a youth, 21, 22, 23, it was like a sin for me to leave my house without my Bible. And anywhere I go, whether I'm going to the mechanic workshop or anywhere, I will, and I will sit down and I will read my Bible. I was working in the high courts. And I would make sure in the high courts where I'm there as a, a clerk of courts, I would carry my Bible. I was reading 5, 10, 15, 20 chapters every day as my general daily practice before they have gone back from office, I've covered at least 20 to 30 chapters because I was addicted from my youth. I have a Bible in my house. Every single page is marked. That is my original Ark of the Covenant. Red pen, blue pen, orange pen, purple pen. I've covered this book by his grace 74 times. I'm in my 75th reading of this book. Brother, <laughs> you cannot be a true general in God's army when the book is not your best friend. Ay, 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 ay. I'm trying to communicate because there are too many people. You're so loose. You don't have time for Bible. You don't have time for God. You leave your house, you can't carry Bible, but you must carry your phone. I'm going to say some hard things today and I will not apologize. I'll be strong and I'll be tough. And I don't care. Because God is on a very serious move to raise up. In fact, God is not interest, interested in the crowd. The crowd that came last night were over 1,000 plus. I know tomorrow night there will be up to 2,000 because it's music. It's time to put on your dancing shoes. And I know they will feel here. Let me tell you, God is not interested in the crowd. He's looking for just two or three people. Two or three people that he will raise to carry the glory to their generation. Lift up your hands again cry unto God and say, Father, I don't want to be a compromiser. I don't want to be reduced to the lowest common denominator in my service to you. Help me to increase my standard. Help me to tighten every area of my consecration, my dedication, my commitment to you. I don't want to be chaff. I don't want to be just like every other, every other person. Any other person is doing it. Therefore, I follow the crowd. Separate me from the crowd. Make me unique. Make me have a difference in my life. Jesus. Ay! Separate me, Lord, from the crowd. Okay, it's all right. Let's pick up our Bible, Proverbs 25, verse 4. I read. Take away the dross from the silver. And there shall be 
there shall come forth a vessel. Hallelujah. For the finer. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, 20, 21, 22. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And then everyone that nameth the name of Christ departs from iniquity. Everybody, next verse. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Hmm. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared Unto every good work. Everybody, flee also. I'm not hearing your voice. Can I hear everybody now? Flee also youthful lusts and follow righteousness and faith and charity and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. One more prayer. Jump up on your feet. Ask God to give you a pure heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Take over. Raise up your vessels for your glory in Jesus' name. Take your seat, beloved. Take your seat. Take your seat. I'm speaking from these two texts. Take away the dross. Take away the dross to be a glorious vessel. Take away the dross to be a glory carrier. Take away the dross to be that vessel of glory. In the preamble, as we were leading up in prayers, I was helping us to understand that glory carriers are different from anointing carriers. And there have been very few glory carriers in every generation. William Seymour was a glory carrier. A literal glory carrier. Moses carried the glory. Shekinah glory was just, just the miracles. The Shekinah glory was on his face. People couldn't look at him because of the glory he carried. And when he bowed out, he carried of that which he and distributed to 70. And even the 70, they couldn't withstand what he was carrying. And still he had enough to give to Joshua. A glory carrier. And Elijah was a glory carrier. His mantle was not just a double portion to Elisha. The glory and the power he carried was so much that one man could not carry it. He had to separate and give to Hazel and give to Jehu and give to Elisha. Kayadabusha. There are going to come men and women from this conference that will be so loaded with the glory. I believe it. 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 Kayada. Hmm. William Seymour was such a man that he so carried the glory. He always sit in the front row of Azusa Street with a cardboard box covering his face. He has to wear the cardboard box because the glory <laughs> is too much. The, the, the light that is shining from him is so much. He literally has to carry a cardboard box to cover his face and to cover the glory. He, he lived in the upstairs of Azusa Street, just as we have the prayer palace. He had an upstairs room. And the cloud of the glory was always thinner when he's not around. The cloud will reduce to a very low level. But the moment William Seymour entered into the hall, that Shekinah glory, which is a physical cloud, and is coming again. I say it's coming again. That physical cloud will begin to thicken. And the supernatural 
and the raw miracles and the spare part department of heaven will open. And all manner of miracles and healings without laying hand, without praying for people will just start to take place literally because a man that has carried the glory has entered the room. Kadu Sedei. Shandaya. May you be a carrier of the glory. There are times the glory will so thicken in the house that above the house there will be literal fire burning. And fire brigade will have to come to try and quench the fire only to discover it's not a physical fire. And when that dimension of glory has increased so high, of course, William Seymour used to be a man who lives in his presence and prays five, six, seven hours every day of his life, even when the glory came to sustain that glory. The price you pay for the glory is the price you pay to sustain the glory. And that is why very few revivals have ever lasted more than two and a half years. They last very short time because the price, the price is very high. Uh, yeah. Very, very high. And while many others are playing games, William Seymour was there pressing into the presence. He paid the price on his knees. And the moment he prays, five hours, six hours, you will see the glory intensifying. You will see it literally. You will see that cloud. And all manner of recreative miracles will start to take place. How can a man who has cancer because of smoking and he used to sleep with a cigar in his mouth until cancer entered the jaw and cancer ate away the jaw and uprooted all of his teeth from his mouth, cancer. To the point that there was a gaping hole in his face. But when Seymour will enter, that man recreative power of God started to bring back fresh flesh. All the missing teeth began to come into place into his mouth and the skin and the flesh closed up everything in a matter of few seconds because the glory has entered. Kadu Zebelianda William Seymour carried the glory to the point that when he married one of the daughters of the Azusa Street, whose name was Jenny Moore, he married that young lady. And for almost two years, she cannot sleep on the same bed as her husband. Because the glory the man carries, electric current will be shocking the wife and will somersault her to the other side of the room. And it took her two years to upgrade herself from the level she was to the level she can flow with her husband. Ah! Father, we are tired of the anointing. Restore the glory carriers. And in that Azusa street, there were so many glory carriers. Not anointed men, a glory. One of them was Laura Langtroff, a woman. She never, it, there's, there's no record of her ever laying hand on the sick or praying for people. She carried the glory literally to the point that if you are crippled or blind or deaf, if she comes within 10 feet of you, your legs will rearrange themselves by themselves. The record says that in the five, six, seven years of Azusa Street, over 4,000 recreative miracles took place through her life. Not by praying for people, but just by carrying the glory. Catherine Coleman carried the glory to the point that when you lodge her in a hotel room, if you're in the room next to her, on the left or the right, above and below, no matter the sickness you carry, you are automatically healed. Catherine Coleman was invited to minister at Full Gospel National Institution, their national program. And when she entered from the front door, everybody collapsed. And they said, Madam, please, you have to, let's take her through the back door. 
And they took her through the back door. Where was the kitchen where they were cooking food? And all the cooks and all of them were slain under the power. And they managed to place her on the place. And it was a breakfast. Nobody could eat breakfast that day because anyone who tried to bring food, you're under the power. Hey! Glory carriers. You only see them three, four, five in any generation. And in any nation, they are very, very few and they are very scarce. But ladies and gentlemen, this final generation, they shall be in their hundreds. They shall be in their thousands. All over the earth, heaven is in a fast lane to raise up glory carriers. Hey, hey, Alan. Hey, hey, Alan. Locked himself up in a room for so many days and weeks and months. And cried unto God, whatever is the price for the glory. And the Lord appeared and gave a light appeared in his room. That was the Shekinah glory. That was Jesus himself. And a voice from the light spoke and gave him 13 things that must be eradicated from his life before he enters that glory realm. This was a man that already cripples are walking. This is a man, A.A. A. Allen. He was, he was one of the leading voices in Assemblies of God America that time. He was already seeing God. But here is God telling him, for you to enter the realm you are talking about, there are still 13 things that must be eradicated from your life. And the Lord mentioned, and he wrote all of those 13 things, including two areas that A.A. A. Allen said he's so ashamed to, he has never let anybody know those other two areas, but it has to do with youthful lust. And it took him two years to get rid of the 13. And the day he got rid of the 13 was the day any time he enters any program, you see cloud of glory. You know, A. A. Allen can be preaching here. There's no rain outside, but physical rain will be dropping inside the house. Oh, Father, do it again. Papa, do it again. And anyone the rain falls upon, no matter the sickness, automatic healing. You'll just be hearing people all over the crowd. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. A. A. Allen in his meetings because in the glory realm, it is the atmosphere of heaven on earth. In heaven, there's no sickness. There's no disease. Do you know if you enter heaven now? And you are 60, 70 years of age. The moment you enter, you're going to become a young man again. If you enter heaven, if you have a bald head, the moment you enter there, all your natural hair has come out again. Now, in the meetings of A.A. A. Allen, as his ministry without prayer, people with bald head, their hair grows out. People with white hair, their natural color comes back again. In the meeting of A.A. A. Allen, if you are heavily overweight, two times your normal body weight, you will just shrink back and you become a thin person again. And if you are drastically underweight, you will you just see flesh coming on your body and you become... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. These were men that carried the glory... I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to define the glory. I'm trying to help us to understand what we are dealing with and what we are talking about. I'm trying to help us to understand what we are looking for, brethren, is the power of the age to come. What we are looking for is the power of the kingdom and the power of the first dominion. What I'm talking about, brethren, is the power of the heavenly realm given to men. And I believe you didn't just come. I believe you are hungry and you are desperate and you are thirsty to see the glory of God in your generation. I really don't have time to talk about the glory carriers. Last night program went away that God really glorified his name. But I was going to talk about the glory carriers last night. But there's no time.
But there were many over the years who have carried the glory, but very few in every generation. <laughs> and Peter was one, his shadow. There's a clip on YouTube, you see A.A. Allen, where he was preaching to a crowd. And he said to them that you might know that that dimension that Peter entered where his shadow healed the sick was not the anointing. That you might know that that was the glory realm and not anointing. You see, you know, he called all anointed men of God and he put a cripple who has been 17 years in a wheelchair and another woman who has been hospitalized for three times operation and has been, you know, so disfigured and all the men of God with their anointing walk past, nothing happened. He said that you will know that's not anointing that raises the cripples. Is the shadow was the glory. Now, let the woman, those women, the cripples, now said, look at my shadow. Watch when my shadow passes them. As his shadow just passed them, the two, all of them jumped out of the wheelchairs. They just jumped out of the wheelchairs. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're talking about. Lift up your hands. Cry unto God. Take me to that level. Daddy, please, 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 please. If other men like me have gotten there, Lord, can't you, can't you do something greater with my life? Hey! Take me to the glory. Shalabagadaboshata. For your glory. Take me to the glory. I will do anything just to see you. And behold, you was my king. Can you take your seats? 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 Oh God. Oh God. The first scripture we read says, take away the dross from the silver. Take away the dross from the silver. The second scripture says, in a great house, there are vessels of honor, glory carriers. They are either gold or they are silver. And before you can become a golden vessel and a silver vessel, he goes down to say you have to purge yourself from these things. And it mentions those things. So there must be some dross. What is dross? Dross is the impurities. Dross is the foreign bodies and the, the, the scum and the chaffs and all the junks that is embedded inside the metals. And for the silver to come out shining and the gold to come out in glory, there's no other way you remove the chaffs and the, the <laughs> washing Metal and knocking and hitting metal doesn't remove it. It has to go through fire. It has to go through intense fire. Please touch that sister. Tell her to sit well. Touch her. Touch her. Brother, touch her. Yeah. Sister, I'm waiting for you. Okay, she's under convictions. Okay. Now, listen. Today, there's going to be a fire that will enter this place. Whatever is in your life that is blocking the glory, <laughs> the fire, intense fire, chaffs, impurities, foreign bodies, things that have been planted in your life as strongholds, the chains are going to be broken. And when you go into those scriptures, and you study those two scriptures, you discover that those foreign bodies and those, those, those scum and those dross, you go inside and you study it. Second Timothy 2, he goes down to talk about, huh, there are some key words he talk about, you must purge yourself of these, of these. That you might be a vessel of righteousness. And be able to call upon God with a pure heart. That you might be a vessel meet and sanctified. Those are key words. Sanctified. Righteousness. Pure heart. Purge. But what are those things? He mentioned only one thing. But he, he said these. 
What are those things? What is the dross? He said, youthful lust. Hey! So, the thing that the enemy is going to use to fight your life to tunnel, to hinder you, apart from a consecration unto the Lord, there must, when we talk about uh, separation, separation is from and is unto. It's unto God in prayers. Beyond that, there are things that must be eradicated from your life. And that thing the Bible specifies. The Bible keys in and mentions only one thing, youthful loss. Because youthful loss contains so many things inside that word, youthful loss. And the reason it's called youthful loss is because from the age of 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 11, 12, anything called sexual defilement and impurity, it doesn't really disturb you. But the moment you become a teenager and a youth, there is what we call hormones. And those hormones begin to trigger inside of your system. And all manner of youthful lust begin to be aggravated on your inside and all manner of passions and desires and right from that time youthful loss begin to take a grip of your life and if you do not put youthful loss in the place where it belongs that thing called youthful loss will be disturbing you in your 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and even as an old man at 80 you will see them raping small girls because that thing called youthful loss, they didn't handle it on time. Blessed is the man and blessed is the woman who handled youthful loss on time. And today is that day. I say today is that day. Oh my God, 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 my God. Hmm. Because the devil has raised us up to be accepting youthful lust as a normal thing. As a normal thing. So that we standardize and normalize it. And say there's nothing there. It's just, an, it's just the normal thing that every other person is passing through. That is why every other person is not operating in the glory. That is why every other person has also been leveled. Because before you can be that vessel of honor and glory and gold and silver, you have to take away the dross. And the dross is identified, youthful lost. Hmm. Brother, do you know your hand is going to be used mightily by God? Yeah. Healing gifts. Your mouth, raw, raw miracles. Your mouth, your mouth. Your mouth will command the heavens into operation. Your mouth, your mouth, your mouth, your mouth, your mouth. You will see creation obeying your voice. Your tongue shall carry the glory. Your hand shall carry the glory. Your ears shall hear God. Your eyes shall see God. But beloved, how can you carry the glory when these vessels, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, instruments, uh, your hand is being used for masturbation? How can it carry glory? How can your eye see the glory when it's seeing nakedness every day in the name of pornography? How can your ears hear the voice of God when you are hearing all manner of uh, uh, impure discussion? and listening to all kind of coarse music and how, how, how can, how can your lips carry the fire of the glory when your lips are being used in sexual, as a sexual instrument. You can't, they can't code, they can't combine the two. There must be a taking away of the dross. There must be a purging so that your vessel, your instruments can be now vessels of the glory ah father let the fire begin to burn let the fire begin to purge begin to prepare somebody here in this house ay, 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 ay. the mantle of William Branham is still looking for somebody 
Since William Branham died, he has not found a man, a woman that can carry that mantle. When William Branham was seven years of age, he was sent to carry, collect water from the stream. And he went with a bucket to collect the water. And he sat under a tree. And while he was under a tree, he heard, ooh, ooh, ooh. a wind was blowing in the trees. And he looked up and there was a voice that said to him, I have called you. If you will keep your vessel clean, stay away from drinking alcohol. Stay away from smoking cigarettes and keep your body, your vessel clean from women. And a day will come, I will return back to you and I will use you to shake your generation. Keep your vessel clean. <sighs> and the voice left. As he grew up, the day came, his father gave him a glass of whiskey to drink and said to him, my son, are you a man? All my boys, they drink, but you, you are a sissy, you are like a small girl. Drink this one to prove you are a man. And as he collected the glass of whiskey from the father, the voice, whoo, whoo, whoo. If you will stay clear from alcohol, from cigarettes, from women, a day will come, I will use you as my vessel of glory. He dropped the, the, the glass. He ran out. His father was laughing at him. A day came, a group of young men handed him a cigarette to smoke. And the voice, whoo, whoo, whoo. If you will keep your vessel clean, stay clear from alcohol. Any day, the opposite sex was coming to him and there was tension and pressure. Whoo, whoo, whoo. And the voice will speak. If you will keep your vessel clean, stay clear from alcohol, from cigarette and from women. A day will come, I will use you for the... <sighs> and that was how William Branham... He was in the crowd, but different from the crowd. Kayadada, Father, lay hand on them. Lay hand on the glory carriers. Lay hand out of the whole crowd that have come. Father, ah, raise that young man. Raise that young woman. Shaka. William Branham, as he grew up, he was so sensitive to the fact that he was not ordinary. May a sensitivity enter you. That sensitivity caused him that any day there is a television on and there is a sensual scene. Any day they are discussing coarse, crude jokes. Any day he meets a group of people and they're discussing vulgar things. He will excuse himself and leave that group. He doesn't stay where there is pollution. He doesn't stay where there is corruption because to carry the glory you cannot mix with the crowd. Ah, that dimension, that level of sensitivity to be a glory carrier was with William Branham from his youthful stage of seven until that angel appeared to him and said, the time has come because you kept your vessel clean. Now it's time for the glory of God to follow you into every platform and every city you enter. My glory shall follow you because you have paid the price of sanctification of your vessel. Do you know that when William Branham goes for a meeting, and they book hotels for him. As he will step into the hotel. He will only step one step into most of the rooms. And he will stand like this. One leg in, one leg out. 
and he will stay for about five seconds. And he will either tell you, it's okay, let's enter. Or he will tell you, please find me another room or find me another hotel. Because in those five seconds, everything that has transpired in that room in the last three days will appear before him. And there was a meeting he went with his son. And the organizers booked him in the most expensive hotel in that city. And they thought he was going to be happy. And he only stepped in and said, check me out from this place. Get me out from this room. And his son, when they got to the next hotel, said, Daddy, why did you react like that? You embarrassed the organizers. He said, son, you don't know what I saw. I saw it wasn't just a man with a woman. There was, there was like group sex on that very bed they were taking me. And the last three nights, and son, if I have remained in that room, I would have been battling in my spirit for the whole of this program. And if I sleep in that room, then the dimension of glory I will carry in the meeting will be reduced. Because the flesh fight against the glory. No wonder William Branham is known to be Practically the greatest glory carrier that ever operated on the earth since Jesus Christ. No wonder up till today that mantle is still hanging in the air. Oh my God. He so carried the glory that one of the baptismal services in the Ohio River, while he was baptizing people in water, the cloud of glory appeared over him. 2,000 people saw the cloud and saw the glory and saw a light above his head and heard a voice audibly speaking over his life. He so carried the glory that there are several photographs of William Branham when he's ministering. You'll see a pillar of fire or you'll see a light of glory. He literally carried the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud that anywhere he goes, you see that glory visible. There's a photograph I have. It's a series of four photographs in one meeting where they snap his photograph in four different places. And each of those photographs, you see the light over his head. A carrier of the glory. William Branham had a meeting. It was an eight days revival meeting. And after the first day, the number of recreative miracles was so many that the auditorium could not contain the crowd the next day. And from the gates down the road, there was a crowd one mile long. You're not hearing me. Are you hearing me at all? Good. That line was the people that were coming for healing. Because anybody he lay hand, piam, that's it. Piam, one mile long. And he told the crowd... My heart is broken for me to see a program and crowd one mile long outside queuing up for visitation. Because of that, I will stay the whole eight days and I will make sure I will be laying hand on everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, laying hand on everybody for eight days and eight nights. When he's tired, he sleeps on the pulpit. And tells them to bring him small food to resuscitate his strength. Then he continues laying hand. But you know the crowd never reduced from one mile. Rather the crowd, the crowd was growing from one mile to one and a quarter miles. To one and a half miles. To two miles. To two. Why? Because the news of the miracles. That people from far cities were all packing their sick down there. When he finished the eight days program, the crowd was longer than when he began the meeting. And ladies and gentlemen, 
The amazing thing about that particular meeting is that every single person he laid hands on were healed. There was 100% accuracy. How can your hand carry power and glory when your hand is being used to touch your body up and down? I've never seen a glory carrier like William Branham. But he paid the price. Purity. <sighs> In Bombay, India. When he landed. He set a meeting for all the religious leaders of all the religions. The Baha'i. The... Confucianists, the Hindu, the Sheikhs, the Sikhs, the Buddhists, the Muslims, 17 leaders of 17 religions. He hosted them in his hotel with a lunch. And after hosting them, he invited all of them personally to come to the crusade that night. And he gave them a front seat row, 17 leaders of religion. And while William Branham was ministering that night, he said, there's a man here. You belong to a particular religion that your discipline is to look at the sun for two hours every day so that your eyes will be open in the spirit realm. You have been doing that for years until your two eyes have become blind. You see in the spirit, but in the physical, your eyes are blind. Come out. And the man came out. His two eyes have been burnt out by looking at the sun every day for hours. And he said, come on the platform. And the man came on the platform. He turned to the 17 leaders of the 17 world religions and said to them, if your God is able to put two eyes into this man, I will drop microphone. I will tell you to put a placard on my back that says false prophet. And I will walk down the streets of India with false profit on my back until I reach the airport and check out never to come again. If your God can put eyes in him. So, let the first person come and perform that miracle. And all of them remain seated. That you might know that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Not I shall put the, ball, the eyeballs, but Jesus. Lord Jesus, can you download two brand new eyeballs for this man? Immediately two eyeballs were suspended in the air like two glass pearls hanging over the head of this young man. And he... Those eyeballs were hanging in the air for over 10 seconds. Everybody saw them. He said, now, Lord, that they have seen, put those eyeballs in his sockets. Everybody in that meeting screamed. And the 17 leaders of the world religion, gentlemen, can you renounce what you belong to? And can you give your life to Jesus? Starting from the world religions, all of them, they bow their knees. There is something we are lacking. There is something we are in need of. It's called the glory. It's called the glory. It's called the glory. Ah, it's called the glory. That very day in that meeting, there was a crowd of 30,000. All 30,000 gave their life to Christ. William Branham from Bombay, India, going home, the driver that was taking him to his airport, he said, sir, you have been so good to me. Is there anything I can do for you as I'm on the way to the airport? I have just a little time. He said, yes, my best friend, he has a daughter who is crippled. She's in a wheelchair. And... The house is even on the way to the airport. Can you pray for her with all pleasure? You're rushing to the airport to catch plane. And they just take you into a room where you see a young girl. She was actually outside. 
Young boys and girls were playing football. William Branham came to the young girl in a wheelchair. Daughter, why aren't you playing ball with these others of your age? She said, have you not seen I am crippled? He said, I am William Branham. I have seen Jesus miracles upon miracles through the whole past nights. And he's here right now standing by me. Daughter, if you can believe him, he carried the ball. He rolled the ball. He said, get up and get the ball. As she stood up, all the legs began to readjust. William Branham. Hey! A man like you, like me. But there was something he overcame called youthful lust. He doesn't, it's a, no, it's a no negotiable area. You do not, any, anything that appears anytime, whether in your phone, anywhere, on the, the moment it, you just separate yourself because you are a holy vessel. Man of God, bring me that cloth. Two pastors, please come. Two pastors. Stand there, sir. Just stand there. Sir, so stand here. The other one, stand here. Take it down. So move, move, shift this side, shift. I want you, to, I want you to. No, sir, you stay there. I want you to understand. This is, this is David. This is David. A man that has never lost a battle from Second Samuel chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, chapter six, chapter seven, chapter eight, chapter nine, chapter ten, chapter eleven, defeating the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Amalekites. Nation after nation, the Philistines, he was like a speed train that was destroying nation after nation. And Satan said, I know the thing I will use to stop this speed train. Youthful lust. Youthful lust. Lust blinds your eyes. Lust covers your eyes. Lust will take away your vision. Lust will take away your ability to also see in the realm of the spirit. The more you look at pornography, you will never see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Without holiness of life, no man shall see the Lord. Do you want to operate in the heavenly realm? Do you want angels to be ascending and descending in your bedroom? You cannot see in the realm of the spirit when you are seeing the unclean and the defiled. Now... This was David in the bedroom and this is, this is his window and this is Bathsheba, beautiful Miss World, Miss Universe, figure eight, batting pure naked, as naked as the day she was born and this is David looking through the window and seeing such a gorgeous woman, begin to lift the blanket up. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. That is how lust was rising in David. Lust, youthful lust and passion was rising and rising in his body. It rise and rise until he was blinded. Blinded to the point that he has forgot all the promises that God made with him. He forgot all the covenants that God made with him. All he can now be taken with is the passion. And to fulfill that passion, lust will push you to the point you will forget every prophecy that God has ever spoken over your life. You will forget what God has ordained you to be to your generation. Youthful lust will cause you to begin to forget everything until you have slept with that man, until you have slept with that woman, and after you have slept and fulfilled your desire. You will now come to yourself. Ha! And you start to cry unto God, creating me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me.
And cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. You begin now to repent and repent again. And cry and cry unto God again and again and again. The question comes, how many times will you be repenting? How many times? Meanwhile, the glory of God is being suspended in your life. Gentlemen, thank you. A pastor, a man of God, was crying every day for a divine visitation. Father, I want to have an encounter with you. Show me your glory. He started praying and praying and praying and praying. He prayed for over one month. Heaven was closed. But the strange thing that happened to him was his eight-year-old son came to him and said, Daddy, last night an angel visited me. Ah! Wonderful. And then that eight-year-old son was continually, constantly having angelic visitations. And the father went to God and said, Father, I am the one seeking for the glory. Why have you left me and visit my son? Heaven was silent. And he called his son and said, Son, next time the angel appears, ask him why God has not come to me direct. Just ask him. And the next day, the son came to the father. Daddy, the angel said, because of your pornography, you are inside. And the angel said, I should tell you, even if you cleanse your life now and keep your eye clean, it will take you one year of sanctification before you will be able to have an encounter with God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, I say I'm not, I'm not here to, to beat about the bush. I'm not here to pamper you. I'm not here to give you a sweet, sweet message. I'm here to tell you that Satan is out with full array of arsenal against this generation. Because he knows this generation is the glory carrying generation. And that is why he has sexualized everything. Everything about this generation is on the table of sex. You want certificate is sex. You want job is sex. Anything you're looking for is sex. But I want to tell you, there is a Joseph in this house. There is a Joseph. There is a Joseph. There are Joseph in this house ah, who will never bow down their knee. Who was Joseph? A double carrier of the glory. He carried revelatory gifts. He can tell his father and mother the future. He can tell Potiphar's and the future. He can tell the prison warden the future. He can tell even the Pharaoh on the throne the future. He carries a seer mantle plus the glory of rulership because there was a price he paid in his youthful stage to be the glory carrier of his generation. Ah, I'm hearing a voice. I'm hearing a voice. I'm hearing a voice. I'm hearing a voice. That voice says there are three, three, three glory carriers here in this house. There are three of them. They are, and he said there are another two of them. They have been in this conference. They are part of the conference, but they are not here right now. There are five of you. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is not looking for the crowd. He's looking for a Joseph. He's, ah, ah, Holy Ghost, locate, 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 a carrier, a carrier. Shaka. Let me have water. The sin of immorality. No, not that one. Not that one. Water, water. That one is juice. The sin of immorality. It's like a man that wants to go fishing. See the river here. I used to go fishing here. Keep it. And when you want to go fishing, you put a hook. You carry worms out from the soil. You put baits. 
something very juicy, something that will be dangling and very attractive. And you drop the line inside. And along comes Mr. Fish and sees the juicy dangling worm. Ha! And decides to go for it until he's swallowed by that thing, hook, line, and sinker. He struggled to come out. The more he struggled, the more the hook enters the throat. There is a young man here. You have been so hooked up in this junks of this generation. The thing has hooked you until almost every night and every day. You masturbate three, four, five times every blessed day. Yet, you are a vessel. You are an instrument in God's house. You are an instrument. You are an instrument. But masturbation, it doesn't leave you. You have been hooked. You have been hooked. But there is a fire that will burn in this house. Ah, I said there is a fire. There is a fire. There is a fire that will burn in this house. I see demons jumping out of the window. Yes. I see chains being broken. Amen. Ah, the sin of immorality is like a man going on a long journey and... Uh, he puts water in the radiator, petrol inside the tank, and he puts uh, oil inside the engine and air inside the tires and prepares for the long journey and begins to move. <laughs> what happened? One small nail has joked the tire. Brother, what's the name of that sister that had been joking with you? Sister, who joked your tire? You were once on fire for God. Blum, 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 blum. Who, 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 who quenched your prayer life? Who quenched your evangelistic zeal? Who quenched the fire of God in your life? Blum, blum. And the car has now packed. I'm here to announce the vulcanizer of all vulcanizers. He is here in the house. He is here to put a fresh air, the wind of the Holy Ghost, back inside your tires to run this journey. Hey, sheke le bosa branda ye, pakusha katata le seti sasuzaya. The spirit of immorality is like your shadow. Everywhere I go, my shadow follows me. That's how youthful lost, youthful lost. If you say, ah, oh, Kalaba is marine kingdom. The power of marine is too much here. Let me, let me leave this place. Let me look for another city. Go to Lagos, go to Benin. Anywhere you go, your shadow will follow you and youthful loss will come there knocking at that door. <laughs> because inside the shadow, there is darkness and inside darkness, evil spirits used to hide. I disconnect you from every evil shadow, every demonic shadow that has been following you right from that time that you began to become acquainted with youthful lust and those demons had an entrance to the gateways of your life. I bind that devil. I command that devil out of your life. Why, man? I close the door against satanic manipulation over your life. Why, man? The sin of immorality is like a bottle of Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is sealed with a lid. Coca-Cola is full of gaseous power. The day you gave your life to Christ, you were sealed by the Holy Ghost. Ah! The day you genuinely repented and gave your life to Christ, there was a seal of the Holy Ghost. And any day you carry Coca-Cola and you shake it, the gas will start to vibrate. Makada. 
That is how you are. Any day you begin to shake in babbling in tongues and start kabashing. Makutata. The vibration of the Holy Ghost start radiating throughout the whole of your system. Katuzede. But what happens? When you just take a bottle opener and you open the bottle. <laughs> what has happened? The glory has departed. The glory. That thing that make a child of God a child of God is not speaking in tongues. It's the fire inside. You can still be speaking in tongues, but the vibrancy is not there. Anytime you double in pornography. Anytime. You give yourself over to masturbation. Anytime you begin to have sex, unbridled sex. Uh, there are 200 people sitting here. You are not yourself. The real you you are supposed to be left you. The glory, the glory God gave you is not the glory you began with. The fire, the urgency, the passion where you began, instead of increasing, it has reduced. Ah, pande kalusada. And even if you cork the lid again and cover the Coke bottle, it's not the same because what left cannot come back. And that's how many of you, you have cock it, you're managing, you're patching up, but you're not what you used to be. Ah, Father, can you give new bottles in this house? Can you place a new seal? Father, can you perform the miracle of a fresh, a fresh downloading, a fresh infilling, a fresh impartation of fresh fire and fresh glory and fresh unction? Kada. Pala, Pasha, Paderere, Le Procede, Mantolekeze, Pandayele Koshekende, Laba Shekede, Masa Zebra Kushaka, La da 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 Resta mi lo, resta mi lo, i capara da da ya, re da 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 ra da 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 ra da da, re da da ra da da da, re da 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 ra da 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 da, la 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 la, Musa, 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 ya da da, ya da. One more chance, Lord. One more chance, Lord. One more chance, Lord. One more chance, Lord. Rest on me. Rest on my glory. Rest on my vibrancy. Rest on my youthfulness. Rest on my power. Rest on my glory. Jesus. Amen. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, listen, listen. Take your seats. Take your seats. There is no replacement. For total abstinence. Young man, young lady, hear me and hear me well. If you're going to be a carrier of the glory, you're going to have to make covenants and vows. You're going to tie your soul on the altar of total abstinence. That is the basic requirement for the glory realm. Not even prayer. 
Prayer, 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 prayer is very good. I believe in prayer. I'm a man of prayer. But you can pray for the next 20 years. If you have not overcome this area, you will never see the glory. This is the one that comes first. Before you start to engage three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. Brother! It's the basic requirement. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. The Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous cannot inherit the kingdom. Ah! What is the kingdom? The glory realm. The heaven on earth. The unrighteous cannot inherit the kingdom. Neither fornicators or adulterers or the effeminate. Effeminate means men that look like women. Women that look like men. Tomboys. And neither abusers of themselves with mankind. Homosexual. Bible says... Know ye not, the next verse says, and be not deceived. Ah, brother, sister, church of this generation. You believe you can live in iniquity and jump into the glory? No, that is anointing. Yeah, yeah. The anointing will accommodate those who are not the glory. Not the kingdom. Not the powers of the age to come. They don't accommodate. They don't accommodate. Ah, it's, it's non-negotiable. It's, it's a no-go area. It's a basic requirement for the glory. Youthful loss must die. Maybe you don't know the time we are inside. Maybe you don't know. You don't know. You don't know how, how important this meeting is to heaven. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you just think this is just like any other program. Maybe you don't know. If you don't know, all heaven is watching over this particular program. All heaven. <laughs> My wife said something yesterday. She said, the reason why revival never lasts two, three, four, five years is because of the vessel. I read a book. I, I was wrong. Jim Baker. I, was, I, I wept. Jim Baker was the man who carried the highest level of glory 1978, 79, 80, 81, 82. He's the first man of God to have what we call satellite disc, satellite television in the whole world. Meaning, every other preacher who wants to preach cable, they had to pass through his network. Because of that, he became the richest pastor in the world. He was the only preacher in that generation who has what we call five-star hotel, 500-room guest house, and a gospel village. He was the owner he was the only man of God that time who has two jet aeroplanes. One for him, one for his wife. He was the only man of God with all of that when he carries microphone and says, Thou power of God, you see miracles standing up, a cripple standing up and blind eyes opening. Jim Baker. Ha! He was a man from his youth. He has never defiled himself. He was a man from his youth. When he married his wife, for 30 years of marriage, he has never touched another woman's breast. But after 30 years of marriage, Satan said, I will still get this man. He passed through the wife. The wife started dating another man. And the news came to Jim Baker. Your wife is going around with other men. And his best friend, Ro Grosvenor, a bishop, a reverend minister, came to Jim Baker and said, man of God, let me advise you. The best way to handle this matter, women are jealous individuals. Seeing your wife is going with other young men, you too carry a young girl. 
And you will see how she will run back to you quick, quick, quick. In fact, man of God, just to help you, he handed over a key. He said, I have already booked a hotel. I have picked up a young girl by name Jessica Hans, 21-year-old girl. Carry this key. Go to so-so-so room. You will find her waiting for you. Go and enjoy yourself. When you have finished, go and tell your wife what you did. You will see what your wife will do. Jim Baker collected the key. I separate you from bad friends. I separate you from bad companies. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Bad friend can even be found inside the house of the Lord. My own, I found him in Bible college. As a young student, 21 years of age, in Assemblies of God Bible College, the dormitory they kept me, where I am sleeping every night when it's night time and you think nobody can see. The man in the bed next to me, he was my senior with a very great powerful ministry, firebrand young man. But once he reaches around 1 a.m., 2 a.m., he removes the wrapper and starts to masturbate. He starts to masturbate, masturbate. He thought nobody was seeing him. But I was there and I would watch this young man every night masturbating. And I had to say, God, please take me out of this room. I don't want to be polluted. I don't want to be corrupted. Get me out from this place. Ladies and gentlemen, that young man carried fire. That young man carried grace. <laughs> but when he graduated, within a few months, he was suspended for immorality. And people were shocked. They said, ah, this young man, this young man who carried fire. Ah, I'm surprised. I'm shocked. Me, I was not shocked. I was not surprised. Because I know he was fighting a fight in the night, in the dark of the night, when no man can seize him. There is a battle warring against his soul. I don't know how many people are here today. In the dark of the night. You are fighting with shadows and devils and demons. You have to conquer that thing here today. You have to go out from this place completely free. You have to make your covenants and your vows with God today. Because brother, hmm, glory will never mix with flesh. And that was how Jim Baker... Went to that room, opened the door. He saw this girl, 21 years of age. She was pure, stark, naked, lying in the bed. Hey, I know the voice of the Holy Ghost was telling him, get out. But the voice of the, the flesh, youthful loss, was telling him, get in. And can you imagine how that great general removed his pants, climbed on top of that girl, how long? 20 minutes of enjoyment. As he pulled his body out from the girl, his eyes opened in the realm of the spirits. He saw all the walls of protection that God had sovereignly placed all around his life, collapsing like pack of cards. He saw all the demons of hell from the ocean, from the bush, from the village, from the countryside, from the heavens, from the earth climbing, coming to devour him, to tear him into pieces. He quickly jumped out from the bed, put on his trousers, ran to his father in the Lord. An EC member of the Assemblies of God Church and fell before him. My father, my father, I have fallen. And the father in the Lord said, because you have confessed, God is faithful and just to forgive. It's over. I will not report you. Return back as if nothing has happened. I will cover you. I don't know how many people are being covered here. I don't know. Because I'm telling you, judgment is about to come to the God's house. And many of the people who are covering and covering, the coverings are about to be removed. 
Yeah, because glory cannot come except judgment first come. Judgment is the precursor to the glory. And whether you like it or not, the glory is coming. And whether we like it or not, judgment is coming to the house. And Bible says it must begin from the house of God. And Ezekiel chapter 9 says it must begin from the elders. Begin from my house. Begin from the ancients. Begin from the altar. Ah, and Jim Baker came back to his ministry and said it's all over. Only for that girl to write him a letter and say, man of God. That girl, 21-year-old Jessica, and she wrote him a letter, man of God. If you don't settle me 1.2 million dollars in the next two months, every newspaper will carry this story. Television, your name will go. Your ministry will go. Your marriage, your family will go. Come and settle me. What he has labored for 30 years, he started to sell all his properties to settle a small girl of 21 years of age. And after settling her, he thought the battle was over. Three months later, she wrote another letter. Man of God, this time I need 2.5 million. And this time you have only two weeks. Ha! Will I sell my jet aeroplane? If I sell, will she not come for another one? While he was battling what to do, three men of God enter his house. One of them was Jimmy Swaggart. And two other men of God, they said, Jim Baker, man of God, we are hearing some rumors concerning you and there's no smoke without fire. This thing, you will be destroyed. You know your assemblies of God. They will suspend you. Two years, you will not enter pulpit. You lose your church, you lose your ministry, you lose your wealth, you lose everything. Please, man of God, permit us to take over everything. Just announce that you are very critically sick. That there's a sickness and a disease that does not allow you want to take some health rest. And go aside for two years. Let us run your ministry for two years. At the end of two years, we will return everything back to you. Just sign the documents. Without looking at the paper, confusion, he signed. He just looked at the caliber of the men of God. Not all Israel is Israel. Your greatest enemy shall be your brother from your own house. He signed. In 24 hours, they landed with police and army. You signed the paper. All this property belongs to us. Get out. They drove him out. Can you imagine? Five-star hotel you lose overnight. 500 rooms. Gospel village you lose. Your two-jet aeroplane, you lose. Your ministry headquarters, you lose. Everything, you lose. All your television ministry, your satellite disc, everything, you lose in 24 hours. Hey! And his wife, when the wife heard, the wife divorced him and married that man of God who told him to sleep with that 21-year-old girl. And they sued him to court and collected his children. He lost his children, lost his wife, lost his ministry. Then those three men of God took him to court and framed a case against him that all this money he used to build this, this, uh, this uh, kingdom, he duped people. He raised money and he... That case, when he went to court, because he doesn't have access to his files, he couldn't defend himself. He lost the case. Jim Baker was given what you call life imprisonment. I have a photograph in my house where Jim Baker, a man, when he carries microphone, now power of God, you see people some assaulting. You see now chains on his hand, chains on his leg. In the court, they drag him out from the court into Black Maria to carry him to prison for life. Oh, the number one man of God in his generation. He has never doubled with this thing. Only one time. Pia! And inside the prison, he lost his mind. He became a crazed man, a madman. He lost his senses. He became mentally insane. Lost his wife, lost his children, lost everything because of just...
My joy is today, Jim Baker has come back. My joy is in the prison, Jim Baker cried unto God. And a life imprisonment sentence that there was no hope. The university in America, the professor, the final year students of law, he gave them as the case study the Jim Baker case. Write about it. And all the students, they wrote and brought back their own verdict that that man was not guilty. And they carried that case back to court. Something that already there's no way has gone to Supreme Court. There's no way. But where there was no way, this God, this God, this God turned the whole thing around and brought Jim Baker out of prison. Restored back his satellite television. Restored back all of his properties. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, if Jim Baker can be restored, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where you fell. I don't know how you fell. I don't know the chain and the shackle that has hold you. I want to tell you, if you can cry, if you can humble yourself greatly and mightily before God, the power of liberation, the power to set you free, the power to set you on a solid rock, that power is here in the house. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. Oh, oh. Come Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit we, pray. we pray. Oh, God, in, in, your, in your fullness and, and your power. Hey! Come in your special way. Allow me to say one thing and we pray. Let me say one thing. Let me say one thing. You can make it. Sister, you can make it. Oh. I was a young man, as you are. At the age of 21, God came into my life. And he said to me, son, if you are going to succeed in this city of Calabar, because I called you, for the healing and deliverance of this land and these people. Son, for you to succeed in Calabar, son, you're going to have to make some strong covenants with me. Because this land, son, the Lord began to show me all the great men of God that have ever been raised in this territory. How the marine kingdom and the spirit of Jezebel and youthful loss destroyed every single man that was ordained to be a carrier of the glory. Quench their star. Quench their fire. God show me. God show me. God show me. He says, son, if you do not handle this thing, you won't even reach their level. Your glory will be quenched before their time. But if you handle this thing now, your glory will be an ever increasing glory until in your 60s, in your 70s, in your 80s, and in your 90s, the glory will be so much. But son, you have to handle this thing. And God said three things to me. Number one, you need to make a covenant with me Vow yourself to be a eunuch. Make yourself a eunuch for my glory. Vow that you will never have any sexual dealings or relationship with any woman on this earth except your God-given wife. Vow! 
and make some strong binding covenants. And I did. I said, Father, any day I begin to mess up with women. In this ministry as a man of God, let me become useless, frustrated, a caricature, a mockery, a reject. Number two, in this land of Calabar, let me walk on the streets of Calabar naked, eating from dustbin. Father number three, any of my properties, let them be taken from me by violence. Number four, any vehicles I have should be smashed beyond repair. Number five, any day I marry, let my wife suffer from intense childbearing problem. Number six, all my children should suffer mental instability. You know why you're saying, hi, chai? It's because your own Christianity never cost you anything. But you are looking for the glory. You're looking for the greatest. You're looking for everything with nothing on the table. It doesn't work like that. God said, that is what you will do. And I did it. I was 21 years of age. I made that vow. Ha! I said, Father, any day also, as you help me and give me the grace to stay clear from women department, women affairs, and women ministry. That's why I am one man. You hardly get me for counseling. You don't get me. I'm not interested so much in the counseling that I will sell out my birthright. I'm after my soul. If ever you see me counseling, watch it well. I counsel and there are people around. Outside of that, you don't come to me for counseling. This glory we are talking about is too important to compromise standards. Father, as you help me and keep me, let these six things also follow me. Number one, in the ministry, raise me head and shoulder above my equal. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the man who has traveled to more nations than any other man in the whole of Cross River States. There's a grace that God has given to me. If you mention three men of God in, this, in Cross River State, not just the city, my name must be among them. Brother! Heaven doesn't raise people by mistake. Father, number two, in the land of Calabar, make my name a household name. Father, number three, you bless me with lands and houses and properties. And he has blessed me. Number four, you bless me with cars and vehicles that I will not be buying. You'll be giving me. I've never bought a car. All my car, they are dash. The car my wife came in today, dash. Last week I was preaching in Onitsha in the district convention. That was just four days ago. When I was coming out, one man came and embraced me. He said, man of God, pray for me. I have a Mitsubishi bus. God said I should sow it into your life. I collected bus just four days. Brother, miracle doesn't just follow you when there's nothing on the table. You're here crying. God, I want to see your journey, your glory. What have you brought to the table? There is a deposit. There is a capital God wants to place on your head. Before that deposit and capital can speak, brother, there's a price. Father number five, my wife will bear children like the Hebrew women. That's how she delivers. No complication. My children will be blessed children. That's how God has blessed us. Two boys, two children, two girls. When I did that one, God said, that one will not carry you. That one will only help you to stay clear. But that one will not carry you. My son, there's a second thing you need to do. I said, Father, what is that next thing? He introduced me to a woman of God who was taken in the spirit and saw the glory dimension coming to America. Brethren, I'm telling you, it's coming. I say it's coming. Amen. You will see Shekinah glory entering churches. You will see revival. You will see it, this generation. This woman in the spirit, she saw it coming to America. When the glory, the Shekinah entered, she saw church after church after church. Any place the glory entered, 95% of all the people were flat on the floor like this. They couldn't even lift up their head under the glory. 
5% were sitting down. Only two out of thousands and hundreds in every congregation were able to stand lifting up their hands. And she said, Lord, what does this mean? And the Holy Ghost said, let me show you. The Holy Ghost, like as if the, the camera lens took her close to the people on the floor. He saw all of them, they were confessing, confessing, what is it? Youthful sins. Small, small sins. Small, small co compromise. And then the Lord said, all these 95% you see on the floor, they are the ones that when the glory comes, they will not be able to either stand in the glory, carry the glory, or be used in the glory. Because they have already sold out their flesh in this season. The 5% you see sitting down, they will witness the glory, they will observe the glory, but they will not carry the glory. That is only two out of every congregation you see. Those are the people who are so clean and pure, they have qualified to carry the glory. Hey! And she asked the Lord a question. Father, is there anything we can do because me, I am struggling to be among the two. What can I do to qualify to stand when the glory comes? And let me tell you this. Anybody you see falling under the anointing is simply telling you that the dimension of capacity you carry is very low. When the glory comes, you must be able to stand. We are entering a generation that is not the falling generation. You stand and demonstrate power. That's the demonstration. That's where we are entering. <laughs> said, what can, what can we do to enter that dimension? And the, the Lord said, you do what David did. He went seven days dry fasting. Lying down prostrate. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not. You, you take seven days cleansing, purging. And the Lord said, that is the minimum. Because of this generation and the intoxicity of pollution, some of you will have to go seven months. Some will have to go seven weeks until all those things have been purged and vomited and the chains have been broken. Ha! The Lord said to me, son, that's what you have to do. You have made a vow to stay clear from opposite sex. Now, for you to be free from pornography, masturbation, youthful lust, you're going to have to enter several months of purging yourself out until I will reform you and reshape you. And from time to time, you will be doing that so that you will be a clean vessel. Am I communicating? I said, Father, thank you. That is how I started consecrating myself. Consecrating myself. Brother, the world we are living in. Try! It takes hand of God. It takes grace of God. Because this thing is warring to capture you on a daily basis. And that is why from time to time, I go back to the altar. From time to time, I freeze myself. From time to time, three, four, five, six, seven months, I am there until I discover that this thing has lost its grip. Then, whew, then God said to me, son, is remaining one more thing. I don't want you to be so tied to the opposite sex. Because Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, whosoever sleeps with a harlot, he has become one with that harlot. Genesis 2, 24, for this reason shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave. That word cleave means to be gum, to be glued, to be jammed together. Genesis 34, verse 2 and 3. Shechem slept with Dinah and his soul clave to her in love. 
If you read expanded Bible, it says, and his soul was bound to Dinah. There was a binding and a bondage. Huh. And the Bible says, Proverbs 6.32, any man that commits adultery with a woman destroyeth his soul, fragments his soul. Brother, many of you, you are here. Your soul is already scattered. You are not a complete man. You're not a complete woman. And until you become a complete man and a complete woman, this glory will not land on your life. <sighs> that is why I said today is a very great day for somebody. There is restoration in the house. There is healing in the house. You know, our church is a church that we hardly preach all this message. All we are into, take it, I receive. Take it, I receive. Take it, I receive. What are you receiving? If you carry plaster, put plaster on woolen fabric and tear it off, you will see some pieces of the woolen fabric in the plaster. Am I right? You cannot sleep with a man. Have relationship with a man. You pull off from that one. Something of that man has been stuck into your soul. If you carry two pieces of cardboard, Glue them together. Let the glue dry. Tear it off. What happened? Some fragment of this one will be gummed to this one. Some fragment of this one will be gummed to the other. Brother, sister, you cannot tell me you have been having relationship and you're a complete person. You are a fragmented soul. You are not really a complete person. That's why today is a healing health clinic. Somebody's soul is coming back to him. Brother, do you know, if you give a virgin $1,000, that's big money, half a million naira, $1,000. Every person she sleep with is like $100 being taken out. You sleep with another man, another $100. You sleep with another one. Some of you, you, you have lost your capital. What God placed on your life, you have already been emptied. And you are here crying for the glory. No, glory cannot come until you put some things in order. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know why marriages doesn't last? Do you know why divorce is very high in our generation? Carry a medical plaster. Plaster it here. Remove it. Put it again here. Remove it. Put it this side. Remove it. Put it. Remove it. Put it here. Remove. Keep on doing that 10 times, 15 times. What happens to the, 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 the glue? After 10 times, 12 times, 13 times, it loses its stickability. And now they carry you to the altar. Will you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. The glue that binds you together has already finished. Father, when we enter prayer, everything that was taken out, every lost glory, angels bring healing, bring restoration, bring deliverance. Father, break the chains. Let there be total restoration. I'm telling you why God dealt with me the way he dealt with me as a young man and how he has taken me the way he has taken me. And he said, son, I don't want you to be so tied to outside lovers. I want you, beloved, can you come? Just come, just come. I want you to be married to my spirit. That there will be two type of people in this generation. Those who are so tied to lovers and those who are, who are so tied to the Holy Ghost. They are married to the spirit. I said, Father, how do I become married to your spirit? You spend three hours every night in prayer. When you wake up in the morning, give me two hours. That's why I don't go for programs in the morning. 
That's why I will disappoint so many people who are looking for me for function, function. Some of you, you have become so function, function, function conscious. Look at, look at the attendance here today. The attendance has gone down because people are running here and there. If you want to carry the glory, you have to stop pleasing man. You have to disappoint man so you can please heaven. Because there is a demand for the carriers of the glory. You cannot be running here, running there. And everybody will say, good, we thank God for you. We thank, I, I, I'm very sure that today, many people will be condemning me. Because there's burial in my church. And one of my deacon wife is being buried. And Reverend Theo is not there. Brother, that is the price I have to pay to carry the glory. Men will scandalize you. Men will criticize you. But when the glory come, they shall bow before you. And God said, finally, my son, before you sleep, give me one hour. Three, two, one. Three hours, two hours, one hour. You become married. My spirit and your spirit become one. Son, this is what I require of you. To be my vessel for your generation. <sighs> Are you still serious? Are you still hungry? Do you still want to be a carrier? Rise up on your feet. I want to be here for your glory. I will do it. Just to see and behold you was my Job king. says, I made a covenant with my eyes. Who was Job? Number one glory carrier in his generation. I made a covenant with my eyes never to defile myself with a woman. Where is the next William Branham? Where is the next Catherine Coleman? Brother, the mantles are waiting. They are hanging in the air. They are looking for a young man. They are looking for a young woman. They are looking for somebody who will say, Lord, I'm ready to lay it all down. I'm ready, Lord, to let go. I'm ready to go all the way. Whatever the price is, here am I, Lord. Here am I. Take my life. Take my life. Use my life anyhow, any way. Lift up your voice. Begin to try to, to God. La kata baya, lege debo shaka tayada, shaka para kata baya taka para kata ya, lege lege debo lege de para kata para kata ya, la para kata kara kata ya da. Yes, me Lord, yes, me Lord, yes, me Lord, maka para kata, maka para kata, maka para kata, maka ta para kata. Just one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. 
Lord. I want to carry the glory. Purify my life. Pass my garment. Pass my garment. Purify my vessel. Purify my vessel. Lord. 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 Sanctify my vessel. Sanctify my vessel. I want to carry the glory. fire intense fire hey! is burning every dross every youthful loss every chain every bondage inside this fire the dross the foreign bodies the compromises they are going to be melted crushed destroyed and broken you all I want you know the message is for you find you your way to this altar come and enter the fire and pray pray yourself loose pray yourself loose pray yourself out pray yourself to be a vessel of glory
two hands just lift up your two hands everything that was taken out from your life every fragmentation of your soul there are things that have gone out that must come back there are things that have gone out from you that has made you that you're no more a complete personality. Father, I enter into the spirit realm. Wherever parts of the souls of these ones have been taken, whether in the spirit kingdom, in the mid heavens, in the demonic kingdom, whether any lover, man, woman has taken their soul Father, today, every lost part, every fragmentation, wherever your lost part was taken to, I return it back now. Every soul tie. I command that chain to be broken now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The passion, the hunger, the yearning, the thirsting in your soul for that man, for that woman. From today, I break that chain. I break that chain. Amen. I break that chain. Amen. I lose you. Amen. Everything that Youthful lust have drained out and left you emptied and left you dry. Father, by the authority you've given to me, I entered the spirit. 
I regain back every lost strength. Every lost powers. Receive back your strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every evil spirit of sexual pollution that was deposited inside your vessel, in your eyes. Kalebo Sendeye. Can you open your eye? Just open your eye. Open your eye. Open your eyes wide. Open your eyes. Every demon in your eye, the spirit of lust. I command you out. Amen. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. The demons in your hands. Kada sada. Kalebo shidi brukuskita ya ta ta ta. Kata. Out in the name of Jesus. Amen. The demons inside your loins, your private parts. Patuza pakatele bosha panda. I arrest that snake. Amen. I break that chains. Amen. I command you loose them. Come out. 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 Intense fire. Every dross. Intense fire. Consume from your body to your soul to your spirit from your outer man to your inner man. Be purified, be cleansed, be purged in the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hand, pray one prayer, and ask God for the mantles of the fathers. Kekupa, Katata, Yagade, 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 Dagada, 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 Dagada,
ministered to me that I need to start going into the nations of the world, going to the fathers of the faith, and collecting the mantles of the fathers. I asked God, how do I begin? Where do I begin? The Lord said, you will go to the father of all the assemblies of God worldwide. The world president of assemblies of God, his name is Yongi Cho. He pastors a church of one million. Go to South Korea. Carry a seed. Sow into his life. And ask him to pray for you for that mantle. I flew all the way. Please, no movement. Please, sir, no movement. I flew all the way to South Korea. Carried the seed. Seven days in prayer mountain on dry fasting. Then I entered the church. When I finished collecting that one, I, the Lord said, you will now go to UK. Go to the, the church of the house of Smith Wigglesworth. Go and collect that mantle of Smith. I flew to, to UK, to Yorkshire. I went to the house of Smith Wigglesworth, a man who raised 23 people from the dead. A man that carries so much fire in his generation. When I got to his house, you can't enter, it's a mosque. The Muslims have bought it. And that is every of these generals today who are late, the Muslims have bought over, turned it to mosque. When I went to that place, I can only lay hand on the wall of the house and if he quits, the mantle. God said, go to the two Jeffreys brothers, Stephen and George Jeffreys. The ones that carried the highest healing mantle in the whole of Europe. And I went to Edgware Road, Middlesex, and located a small Assemblies of God church, which was the last platform Stephen Jeffries preached in before he died. And I was, as I was laying over the platform, evacuating the mantle, the pastor came out. His name is Joseph Simpson, Reverend Joseph Simpson. He asked me, what am I doing? I said, I need the mantle of this man. This was his last platform. This was his final pulpit. He said, man of God, if that's what you're looking for, the last surviving relation of this man is still alive. She's living in so, so, so streets, so, 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 just round the corner from here. He gave me the address. I went to the house of the woman. An old woman came out. And I told her what I'm looking for. I sat down with her for seven hours talking on revival. Talking about all the revivals of the Jeffreys brothers. She handed me all of their paraphernalia, all of their magazines, all of the newspaper cutting of all the revival they carried. And finally, I said, Madam, please, you are the last member. Can you lay hand and release those mantle? I collected. I went to Bristol. Went into the church of John Wesley. Today, it's no more a church, it's a museum. When I entered there, I saw the Bible of John Wesley. I saw the place he used to preach, the platform. I went to those places. I evacuated the mantle of John Wesley, Charles Wesley, George Whitfield. I said, Father, where do I go again? Go to Edinburgh. Go to the house of John Knox. Give me Scotland or I die. And we flew to Scotland. And have entered the house of John Knox. It's a museum. You go, you pay money to enter the house of John Knox. You enter his bedroom. You see his Bible. Enter there. Evacuate. That is how. I have been traveling for the past 15 years. Going from nation to nation. To all the fathers of the faith. That ever carried the glory. Until God said, even the ones that are still alive, go and meet Maurice Sorello. I'm taking him soon. I have to fly with my wife to O2 Arena in London. We went there, sat down there, sewed, 
Maurice prayed. Reinhard Bonnke, before he died, we met with him. He prayed for us, lay hand on us. God said, go to Kubos, Prophet Kubos, in South Africa. Prophet Kubos, who doesn't paint the wall? What he has is 5,000 wheelchairs, walking sticks, and crutches. Because he has raised 7,000 cripples. He said, go and meet him, because I will take him soon. I met with Prophet Kubos in Klegsdorp in South Africa. He has what you call pool of Beseda, where you carry people on wheelchairs. You push them inside the, the swimming pool. When they come out the other end, they are walking on their legs. I said, go to him. I went there. He prayed for me. Two weeks after that, Prophet Kubos went home to be with the Lord. Many of these people have gone to, they are no more, but their mantles. That's what I was looking for. Go to Umar Akpai. I may take him any day from now. I have to go and meet Papa Umar Akpai. He prayed for me. Go to the camp of Adeboyi. Go to the camp of Redeem. Lie down on their altar. Go to the one of, uh, of uh, Paul and Neche. Go and lie down there. Evacuate their mantles. Go to all the fathers of the faith. That is how I have been going for the past 15 years. I traveled to 40 nations of the world contacting Greece, mantles, batons, and torches. And after carrying all of these things, God said to me, you have tried. You have collected these ones. Now you know, you need to go and collect the mantles of all the Old Testament prophets. From Enoch, Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. Go and collect them. I said, Father, how do I do that one? Go to Israel. Go to the Mount of Olives. I was there three days and three nights with my wife. When we got to the Garden of Gethsemane, and we got to, there's a particular place they will show you. He said, that is the grave of the prophets. Ezekiel is there. Jeremiah is there. Habakkuk is there. Zechariah is there. That's the graves of the prophets. I stretch my hand. I evacuate. I said, Father, I think the assignment is over. That's why I told you, this program is not a program. If you take it as a program, that's your own. But it's not a program. This is heaven final bus stop. To raise up his army from the land of Calabar to the ends of the earth. And God said, go and collect the mantle of all the New Testament apostles. I said, Father, how do I begin? He said, go to the Isle of Patmos. Go to the last of the apostles, John. He died in the Isle. He's there in the Isle. He said, but God even saw, he said, he didn't, he didn't even die. He's still there. That's why if you read the scriptures, Jesus said, there are some of you who are standing here. You will not taste death until I come again. He said, go there. So you can collect the mantle of all of the New Testament apostles. That's how I flew to the Isle of Patmos, to Greece. Enter high sea, two days. Landed there. I was there. Until God showed me the cave where John, Jesus, appeared to John. And I entered there, collected those mantles of Peter, James, John, Thomas, Matthew, Andrew, Bartholomew. <sighs> it took me 15 years. I said, I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just going for tourism. Not knowing that God was uh, giving me an assignment. And after 15 years, God said to me, my son, now you have done that one. This is the second assignment. Step down from church because you don't have time. Start to run from nation to nation, city to city. Any platform you enter, release the mantles. Release the mantles! Because I am in a fast lane. I am moving with speed. I'm going to raise up the last day generals. I'm going to raise up the armies of the Lord. The sons of God are about to manifest in every nation all over the earth. So begin to run and release the mantles. Rise up on your feet.
If you're joking, that's okay. You take it, you go like that. But go and try, you, you, standing there, go and try to go to one of these places. You know what is inside. By the time you go to one place, you know the price that is inside. And if you understand what God is doing here now, that is not just a program. This is encounter of heaven with earth and earth with heaven. Now, point your hands to this altar. You have to pray your last prayer before we round up this program. That, Father, I refuse to operate on my own anointing. I came to collect the mantles of the fathers. I need the mantle of Catherine Coleman. I need the mantle of A.A. A. Allen. I need the mantles of Jack Cole. I need the mantles of William Branham and William Seymour. And I need the mantles of the fathers of the apostles. And I need the mantles of Jeremiah and Isaiah and the mantle of Elijah. Oh God, one more time. Let the mantles fall. Let the mantles fall. close your eyes there are 17 people here you're going to have an encounter with your father your father is not a man that is living in this earth your father is one of those generals of the faith that is in the glory The mantle of that your father you will have an encounter with will fall upon your life. Seventeen of you, you will have that encounter. Three of you, you're going to start to operate before this year is over. In a peculiar, unusual grace. It's not the grace that comes from you. It's from the mantle of your father. And some of you, your father is a mother. Look at Catherine Coleman has entered the house. Look at Catherine Coleman. Look at Catherine Coleman. Look at Catherine Coleman. Look at, look at Catherine Coleman. Look at Catherine Coleman. Look at her mantle. Look at her mantle.
There's a young man here. The mantle of Smith Wigglesworth. The mantle, the mantle of Smith Wigglesworth. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Locate, 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 locate. Power, 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 power. I am seeing three people standing in a row. One of those people is Elijah. Standing behind Elijah is John Alexander Dawi. Standing behind John Alexander Dawi is Archbishop Benson Idohosa. They have just entered in the house. They are standing together because the mantle of Elijah is the same mantle that Benson Idohosa was operating on. It's the same mantle John Alexander Dawi was operating. There are two of you right now. Holy Ghost, locate, 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 locate. Jesus name can you carry your hands out by your side like an aeroplane I want to take off just carry your hand like that you're going to feel something heavy like a coat being placed upon your shoulders that is the mantle that is the mantle that's the mantle. Take it, 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 take, 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 take. Shadarana, shadarana, take, shakapusha, papa, papa, shaka, paka, tele, prose, payarana. There's a mantle that is moving around the house. There's a mantle that is moving around the house. Since that man was taken out, nobody has been able to carry that mantle. But it's here, it's here, it's hanging in the air. It's hanging in the air. That's the mantle of Apostle Babalola. The mantle of Apostle Babalola. Kadebo Shendeyelebo Shekedeye. Manta, look at also the mantle of William Seymour. The, the revivalists, the revivalists are now entering. Charles Finney has entered. John Wesley has entered. Spurgeon has entered. Moody has entered. Ivan Roberts have entered. The revival carriers, the revival carriers. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, locate, locate, locate. Power, power, power. Jesus name we pray final prayer just go on your knees just go on your knees and tell God I refuse to go the way I came I refuse to go empty give me my own share give me my own portion 
Give me my own deposit, Father. Give me, give me from the realm of the Spirit. Let me go with that which belongs to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I can only do the little one that God helped me to do. But it is wisdom to also sow into the grace. You cannot buy this thing, but you can connect. You use your seed and connect by faith. And key into this which the Lord has already done and has already pipelined for this generation. You have 10,000, you have 5,000, you can sow and drop it between today and tomorrow. Even if you don't have cash, we will give you the, the uh, account number. If you can do that and you're ready to key into these mantles of glory of the fathers which have been dispatched here, can you climb up to the altar where I am? Can you climb up to where I am? If the Holy Ghost is telling you 10, don't come down to 5. Just know yourself before God. That's how serious we are here. 10,000, 5,000, you key in. You key in. You key in. We round up tomorrow night, so you struggle to bring that money tomorrow or you transfer it. We will call the account. You cannot bring 10, you cannot bring 5, but you can sow a seed of 3,000 or 2,000. Just those of you who are on the altar, can you give chance so that people can come into the altar? Those of you who are kneeling at the altar, please give us chance. People need to make some commitments. You can give three or two thousand. Can you come and stand on the altar? Forget about entering inside. Just stand around. Three thousand and two thousand. It's okay. I say stand around. No, don't. That's okay. Just stand around. Three thousand, two thousand. Stand around. Nothing is for nothing. Carriers of glory. <laughs> it will cost you everything, oh, this thing. To carry glory, it will take everything from you. Everything. Everything. And God will so handle you in a way that by the time he discovered there's still an area remaining, he will perch on that thing until he has gotten that one. The last group, 1,000 or 500, you can come. You can come. Can you pray your last prayer? You are releasing your own finances. That's your blood. You are putting your blood inside this thing because you need it. You need it. Ancients of days, I bring young men, young women who have come to the altar to say, Father, forward ever, backward never. I bring young men, young women who have made covenants and vows of holiness and purity and sanctification. 
Daddy, not by might, not by power. The grace that has helped me and kept me, let it keep them. Father, I was 21. I made those covenants. Today, I'm almost 60 years of age. And you're still keeping me in this way. You who have been with me, you will be with them. You who have raised me, raise them higher than where I am. Father, they have come to also sow their seed. To connect to the mantles of the fathers and the mothers of the faith. I am asking, Papa, in the next seven days, may the real spiritual father and mother appear to them. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. That they will run with the mantles of the fathers. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You have it. You drop it. You have parts. You drop the one you have tomorrow. You balance the other one. We are still having two more sessions or three more sessions of prayers. We just need to be around and make sure we climb that mountain. Let's continue in prayer.